Welcome, I'm Katherine Hadro, and this is EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. Pro-Life Policy. A Republican senator announces plans to introduce 14 pro-life bills during this Congress. And a House representative called on President Joe Biden to reinstate the Mexico City policy. We speak to both House and Senate Pro-Life Caucus chairs, Senator Steve Daines and Representative Chris Smith. Oscar Buzz, a film that partnered with Planned Parenthood, is picking up awards, and some are predicting it may be an Academy nominee. I speak out about the abortion movie. And Super Mom, NFL wife and mother of seven, Kirsten Watson, takes on a new career role. She shares her message to women who think having children is a setback in their career and dreams. Today, babies with Down syndrome are the most endangered on earth. And for me, this is very personal. Just under three years ago, our world was blessed with a sweet baby boy named Andrew. He has Downs. His parents are very close friends. Andrew is a true joy, and his family celebrates his life every single day. But in the United States, 67%, 67% of babies diagnosed with Down syndrome are aborted. Two out of three. That was Senator Steve Daines of Montana speaking on the Senate floor last week, addressing how babies with Down syndrome are disproportionately aborted in the womb. He went on to say abortion is a tool of modern day eugenics and announced he is now co-sponsoring the Protecting Individuals with Down Syndrome Act, which bans abortions solely because of Down syndrome. Danes is the founder and chairman of the Senate Pro-Life Caucus. He also announced last week that even though the Senate is under a pro-abortion majority right now, he plans to introduce 14 pro-life bills this Congress, including one that prohibits sex selection abortion and one that defines that life begins at the moment of conception and is protected by the Constitution. Joining us now from Capitol Hill is Senator Steve Daines of Montana, chair of the Senate Pro-Life Caucus. Senator, welcome back. In that Senate floor speech we just listened to, you mentioned little Andrew, who has Down syndrome. We featured Andrew on this very program. Why is it important to you to speak out on behalf of the unborn with Down syndrome? Well, that's why we've got to continue to protect the most vulnerable in our society, the unborn, the disabled, the elderly, like little babies, like baby Andrew. Uh, he is a joy to the family. He has an older brother, an older sister, and it's shocking to see what's going on in our country where they're using selective abortions to abort these down babies. And in, in the moral contradiction cannot be more evident. You think about how Democrats and Republicans, everybody comes together for Special Olympics to ensure that we protect those with disabilities that relates to a, their way of life after they're born. And yet when it comes to uh, being in the womb, the most dangerous place for a down baby is the womb. Mm -hmm. Two out of three of those down babies are selectively aborted because they have an extra chromosome. Mm. This bill that you're co-sponsoring to protect those babies, do you have any hope that it will get a vote on the floor? We do. In fact, I give a, a big shout out and thanks to Senator Inhofe of Oklahoma, who has been helping lead that effort to bring it to the floor, to bring it to the attention of the American people, to shine light on what's going on with this modern day eugenics. Just because of the chromosome configuration of a down baby, they are being aborted. Mm -hmm. And it's chilling. You go to a country like Iceland. In Iceland, you don't see down adults, down children, because they virtually have aborted all of them. We cannot allow our country to go down this path of really doing selective abortions because of chromosomes. Mm. Senator, you announced last week you plan to introduce 14 pro-life bills, 14. But considering the Senate is under a pro-abortion majority right now, where can these bills go and how, as Senate pro-life chair, do you plan to protect against Democrats working to repeal the Hyde Amendment and pro-life protections? 
Yeah, well, we're fighting hard up here on Capitol Hill. I'm very pleased to see that we now have 45 U.S. senators who've signed a letter that I'm sending to Chuck Schumer that will say that we will oppose any legislation that in any way goes after the Hyde protections or any of these pro-life protections we fought so hard for over decades in some cases. So we now have a filibuster-proof majority that will ensure that no matter what Chuck Schumer tries to do with the pro-abortion forces, we can stop it in the U.S. Senate. That is some big pro-life news. Thank you for sharing that. Senator EW Chan News Nightly's White House correspondent Owen Jensen asked White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki whether President Biden is going to make any effort to reach out to pro-life Americans after rescinding the Mexico City policy last week. Here's her response. Well, those have long been the president's positions, and uh, he certainly uh, was just restating them and delivering on promises he made on the campaign trail. But the president will, re will reach out to all Americans, um, and that is uh, how he's going to govern, what he talked about in his inaugural address, uh, and he has every intention of delivering on that promise. Senator, what are your thoughts on that? And do you have any hope President Biden will reach out to pro-life lawmakers such as yourself, especially considering he previously supported the Hyde Amendment? Well, look at what's going on right now in our country. Uh, millions of dollars were spent by Planned Parenthood, other organizations uh, on behalf of the pro-abortion lobby. And now what you're seeing is uh, they're cashing in on Joe Biden's campaign promises. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not optimistic that we're going to see any moderation from President Biden. They are lurching to the far left, the, the most extreme pro-abortion force in this country now have, have their way with this administration. It's a tragic outcome. Uh, I, I wish President Biden would go back to his original roots of protections of the Hyde Amendment, where he supported it. But he's changed, as has, unfortunately, the Democrat Party. So the most rabid, radical, anti uh, uh, life pro-abortion forces are now at work on Capitol Hill. That's why this fight is very intense. It's very real. And I'm just grateful for so many of my colleagues in the United States Senate who are standing together to fight on behalf of the most vulnerable, to fight on behalf of the unborn. Absolutely. And that, filib that filibuster-proof news is big news for the pro-life movement. Senator Steve Daines, pro-life caucus chair in the Senate, thank you so much. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. We are joined now on Skype by Marilyn Musgrave, former U.S. representative for the state of Colorado and now the vice president of government affairs for the Susan B. Anthony list. Congresswoman, we just heard Senator Steve Daines say he plans to introduce 14 pro-life bills this Congress, despite it being a pro-abortion majority. As someone who worked in Congress for years, what's the significance of this, even if those bills don't go anywhere? First of all, let me say that we are so proud of Steve Daines and his heroic leadership on life. As you said, he's the founder of the Pro-Life Caucus mm -hmm. in the United States Senate. That is critically important. Uh, he is tenacious, and that's exactly what you have to be in this political arena. You know, majorities come and go. Uh, it's really great to serve in the majority. Sometimes you can't do that, but what you can do is be faithful uh, in defending life. And that's what Senator Daines is doing. He's working very hard to protect the Hyde Amendment, advance the cause of life. And those things have to be front and center before the American people. So we look forward to the day where we will, where we will have mm -hmm. 60 votes in the Senate and these pro-life bills will be signed into law and we will be saving babies. I just applaud his tenacity. And back home in his state of Montana, state legislature has four very strong pro-life bills going through the process. That's so encouraging. One would be informed consent, banning late-term abortion, and adding safeguards for women and girls. So great things in Montana and great things from Montana as Senator Steve Daines leads on life. We saw this week President Biden welcome 10 GOP senators in the White House to discuss COVID relief negotiations. The core of the president's message seems to be about unity. But, Congresswoman, do you see any way the president will be welcoming to pro-life senators and what the Senate Pro-Life Caucus is trying to advance? Is there any potential room for negotiations in your eyes? Well, I, I don't have any hope in this area. Uh, in regard to life, there's actually no daylight between him and abortion extremist Kamala Harris. 
uh, sen uh, Senator Hyde support or Senator Biden supported the Hyde Amendment. It was a politically uh, political expediency. He has moved away from that. And uh, Maris polls just came out showing that a strong majority of Americans, and I might add, that is Republicans and Democrats oppose funding abortion with their tax dollars. So as I think about Joe Biden, if he can't find it in his heart, if he can't look back to his beliefs, I hope that he'll see that it's politically popular uh, mm. to support these common sense pro-life measures. But unfortunately, he's giving us all the wrong message in regard to uh, supporting life. Mm -hmm. We only have about a minute left, but pro-life lawmakers on Capitol Hill face an uphill battle these next two years especially. What's your message to pro-life lawmakers right now? Protect, hide, and preserve the filibuster, and be faithful in standing for life. Uh, we're tenacious in the pro-life movement. We're not going away. And we have great heroes in the United States Senate that will continue to stand for life. Mm, well, great insight as always. Marilyn Musgrave with the Susan B. Anthony List. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Catherine. The chair of the Congressional Pro-Life Caucus is calling on President Joe Biden to restore a pro-life policy he revoked just last week. Representative Chris Smith of New Jersey authored a letter to Biden that's been signed by more than 100 members of Congress. In it, the Congressional Pro-Life chair writes that abortion is not health care and that you, the United States foreign assistance should be life-affirming. Last week, President Biden rescinded the Mexico City policy, meaning taxpayer dollars will now go to groups that perform or promote abortions around the globe. Here to tell us more is Representative Chris Smith himself, the chair of the Congressional Pro-Life Caucus. Congressman, welcome. President Biden, a Catholic, rescinded this major global pro-life policy, the Mexico City policy. As a Catholic congressman, as a pro-life leader, what's your reaction? Well, profound disappointment. Um, we are appealing to the president to revisit it. Um, frankly, you know, the unborn children of the world and in this country uh, need friends and advocates, not powerful adversaries. And unfortunately, President uh, Biden has set himself up as the abortion president this early in his presidency and his tenure in office. What a profound disappointment. <clears throat> we know all over the world, in countries in Central and South America, in Africa, Asia, there are pro-life countries that are under siege to reverse their policies that protect life. And where's all that coming from? It's coming from Planned Parenthood, IPPF, Marie Stopes International, and they're the very groups uh, that were denied U.S. taxpayer funding because of that advocacy, because they lobby, and because they perform abortions on demand, uh, even in countries where it's not legal. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's a very, very disturbing. Uh, and he did other things as well in that executive order, uh, including on Title X. But, um, uh, you know, the, the whole idea of separating family planning from abortion clinics in this country uh, goes back to George Herbert Walker Bush. Um, you know, Bush won, and, and we finally got that during the Trump administration, and he's now looking to reverse that, and also to give money to the U.N. Population Fund, uh, which has been complicit in crimes against humanity, and that is to say forced abortion and coercive sterilization in China. Uh, under Trump, under Bush, under Bush, and under Reagan, mm. uh, we did not provide money to that uh, UN agency because of that terrible hand-in-glove relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. Well, speaking of other administrations, Congressman, you've been serving in the House of Representatives for 40 years now. You've had to navigate through pro-abortion administrations before. What is the pro-life strategy going to be the next two years especially? Well, we will be tenacious. We will respect even those with whom we have profound disagreements. Uh, that has been my and the pro-life movement's perspective throughout all of this. I've been in the pro-life movement for 48 years. Uh, we love even our opponent. Uh, we know that so many people uh, who used to be pro-abortion came over to our side, including Bernard Nathanson, uh, uh, Abby uh, Johnson, uh, who, as we all know, uh, used to run a Planned Parenthood clinic in Texas. Uh, our hope is that, uh, and that our argument is, is persuasive what about the child? They talk about choice. Choice to do what? Hmm. Dismember and decapitate an unborn child, a very hideous process, and after at least 20 weeks, it's a very 
painful process for the child. And of course, all the deadly poisons, including RU46, which actually starves the baby to death. Uh, they like to gloss over that. They like to trivialize that. Uh, and that's what they're doing uh, overseas in countries that are pro-life. Uh, the very same NGOs, non-governmental organizations that have led uh, the abortion movement in this country, we're now going to be funding them under Biden's new order. Uh, and it's a complete reversal of Trump's uh, executive order. And I find that unconscionable. You know, for a man who claims uh, that his faith mm. illuminates his path, um, what about the least of our brethren, unborn children? Uh, in this, you know, 62 and a half million children have died in the United States, and he wants to codify Roe versus Wade. That's what he said right. on January 22nd. But go even further, uh, Catherine. Go even further. The the bill that's pending in the House and the Senate uh, in the past, and, and it'll be reintroduced shortly, uh, is a comprehensive. A nullification of every state law, like informed consent, waiting periods, uh, parental notification statutes that have saved millions of children. And then the Hyde Amendment. The Hyde Amendment has saved 2.4 million people. 60,000 uh, children are not killed every year by way of abortion. Why? The money wasn't there to effectuate uh, their violent demise. We only have about a minute left, Congressman, but yes. do you have any hope that there will be Democrats who step up and serve any kind of pro-life leadership role in the House? Well, in the House, maybe not. Um, every Republican is pro-life, sadly, and I say tragically every Democrat, it would appear, maybe there might be one, uh, are pro-abortion. Uh, when I got elected back in 1980, there were at least 80 pro-life Democrats. Mm. Uh, they're not here anymore. They were primaried out. Uh, some retired. Uh, people like um, uh, Dan Lipinski were right. primaried and lost. Right. Uh, so these are good, solid people. You know, I'm hoping that the Democrat Party at the grassroots takes back uh, its party and says, we have always been for the little guy and the little gal. We've always been mm. for the least of our brethren. Well, the unborn child uh, is the least of the least uh, because they have been, uh, you know, just completely written out of our law. And again, two, uh, 62 million dead babies right. and counting. Uh, it's more than all the people living in Italy. The wow. entire population of Italy has been killed in the United States uh, by dismemberment and chemical poisoning. Mm. Congressman, thank you for your pro-life leadership. Congressman Chris thank Smith, thank you. Thank you. Coming up, a movie that teamed up with Planned Parenthood leads the 2021 Independent Spirit Award nominations. I speak out when we return. Plus, Kirsten Watson is here. We speak to the NFL wife and mother of seven about being pro-life and her new role. Welcome back to EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. I'm Katherine Hadro. The 36th Film Independent Spirit Awards announced a movie that collaborated with Planned Parenthood is this year's most nominated film. That is this week's Speak Out segment. Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always is a movie about a 17-year-old who travels with her cousin from rural Pennsylvania to New York City to obtain an abortion. I'm just not ready to be a mom. Where else could you go? Nowhere in Pennsylvania. I think you should try another place. In the film, Planned Parenthood tells the main character, a pregnant teenage girl, that the pro-life pregnancy center she originally went to lied to her. If that plot feels like Planned Parenthood PR, that's because it is. The movie makers collaborated with the abortion giant for this film. Here's what the writer and director of Never, Rarely, Sometimes, Always said, quote, I'm grateful to have worked with Planned Parenthood to ensure this harrowing reality was told accurately and authentically. That's a problem right there. If you're counting on Planned Parenthood to tell you accurate information about abortion, they have a financial incentive to distort the truth and make the killing of your unborn child seem like a positive option. I hope that this Speak Out example drives home to you how closely linked the abortion industry is with Hollywood and the movie business. Do not depend on TV and films to paint a true portrayal about the grim reality of abortion, especially when the abortion industry is backing them. 
And let this also serve as a reminder for us in the pro-life movement that just as we need to change laws, we need to change culture. We need to be engaged in the arts and films and media to ensure a pro-life influence. We need to create so we can point to our creator and the truth that every life is made in his image and likeness. Let us get to work so that movies highlighting the pro-life truth are the ones getting large audiences and award nominations. This collective desire to protect the dignity of life requires us to do justice. Our righteous, life-giving deeds must boldly address the most pressing needs of the women, men, and children in crisis. We must operate in kindness and mercy. That is Kirsten Watson speaking at last week's virtual March for Life rally. She is the wife of former NFL player and Super Bowl champion Benjamin Watson. The Watson wife is a pro-life advocate in her own right, a mother of seven, and now the new executive editor of Mom Life Today, in which she'll continue to show the beauty of life in her new role. Kirsten Watson is this week's pro-life focus, and she joins us now on Skype. Kirsten, welcome to the show, and congratulations on your new role. You are a wife, a mother of seven, a speaker, a podcaster, and now executive editor of Mom Life Today. First, tell us about your new role and how you hope to help moms across the nation. Yes, yeah, so well, thank you for having me. It is such an honor. I would say that this new role is one that God has basically been preparing me for, I think, <laughs> for the last 15 years of, of course, being a mom and, and being a wife. And now this, it's just been an awesome opportunity um, to be a part of something that was already established as a wonderful place for moms to go and find encouragement through other women and through what they had to say based on biblical truth. And so now in this role, I've gotten a chance to see um, how to reach women and reach moms specifically to give them a place of encouragement, a place where we can help each other learn how to do this thing called moms and be a mom. And there's no there's no real specific rule book, but a place that we could go and, and um, have conversation and obviously go back to truth and know how the Lord sees us so we can find our true identity in him as we carry out this thing called motherhood. That's beautiful. That's you cute. you really model for us how much moms and women can do. Kirsten, what's your message to women who are afraid that having babies might get in the way of living out their dreams? Right. I, I think sometimes that can happen for sure. And I think the world tells us that that is what is going to happen. And I was definitely there early on in our marriage where we had to move and I could not establish what I thought was my career. But in actuality, God was preparing me the entire time for something that was much bigger than I ever, you know, expected. And so I think we look in the Bible, you think about David, I mean, he was just a shepherd and what he was learning day to day was preparing him for what God had in store for him. So I guess my message would be to not um, look at the world standards in terms of what you're supposed to be, that God knows your dreams, he put them there. And um, in, in time, you know, those dreams and those desires will be fulfilled in a way that you would have never imagined. Mm, I love that. Kirsten, you and your husband are often in the spotlight, and our culture seems to be one that's increasingly judgmental and divisive. Any advice for our pro-life audience about living out their pro-life beliefs in what seems like a hostile world? Right. I would say I am definitely one that not, doesn't like to be on social media. I do think it's a place where you know, God is really using people and voices to talk about a lot of different issues, but it is also a place that you, it opens yourself up to a lot of harsh criticism and people who um, disagree. And I think disagreement is fine, but sometimes, so for me, I realize that social media might not be the best place for me to carry out those conversations. And so I think you really have to talk to God and say, you know, God, is this my, is this my road that I'm supposed to travel? And so when it comes to your dreams, desires, and things that you really are um, an advocate for, I think there's other ways other than social media, where, you know, where you can really put in your time and your effort and your talent. Um, and I think there's other ways to do it other than social media. But I think social media has been a great way to do it. It's just making sure that you're doing what you're called and not necessarily what someone else is called to do. That's some good advice. Kirsten, it's obvious in speaking with you right now, you're a devout Christian. How do you lean on your Christian faith and your role as wife and mother? And what role does Christian community play in that? Yeah, I think well, that's the only reason why I'm here <laughs> is because the Holy Spirit is giving me everything I don't have, which is a lot. So um, I, I think that community is important. I think that knowing the Bible is important. I think 
um, right now in a time where um, I'm really digging in and finding a new love with Jesus. And so I think that has really given me a lot of comfort in a time when there's a lot of unrest, um, just in general with our family specifically, but in the world. And so I think we have to look to something bigger. And for me, that is God, that is his word, that is the things that Jesus has told me to do. Um, that's in my prayer life, that's in my community. And so all of those things working together help really to make it be day to day and and get us through what we need to get through um, on short term and also long term. Well, I have to say your faith really shines through and it shines through your beautiful family as well. Thank you for all that you do in building up a culture of life in our world today. Kirsten Watson, God bless you and congratulations again on your new role. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. Thanks. That does it for this edition of EWTN Pro-Life Weekly. Until next time, we'd love to hear from you. Find us on social media at EWTN Pro-Life on all the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we're there. You can also send us a message by emailing prolifeweekly at EWTN.com. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, life is a gift. Your life is a gift. God bless.